two. Life is challenging and difficult. No one gets out alive. Time to suck it up, Buttercup. Get ready for a monster-sized boot. Aim to help you get traction on personal change and get living. I am John Curran, your host. Join me as I share my journey exploring the forces that motivate us to change and help us get through whatever life throws at us. A swift kick in the ass. Life on your terms. Welcome to another episode of A Swift Kick in the Ass. This is your host, John Curran. Today's topic, perseverance, friend or foe. So perseverance really is a concept about having an ability to continue striving towards a a goal despite obstacles and setbacks. And for me... Perseverance is also the name of my 20-foot Bertram that was built all the way back in 1966. It's a boat that was my dad's, and I inherited that boat, and I'm not really a mechanic. I'm not a mechanic. I do something else for a living, but uh, this boat has been a challenge. It was just a shell when I got it and my dad, um, thought, you know, he was concerned that I would never finish the project, but I, this created a vision in my head back when, I mean, actually I've had this vision in my head since I was a little boy and I used to play on the boat, but I had this vision of being a captain, you know, on that boat and taking it out and having fun with my family and creating new memories it's, it's an awesome vision, but to be quite frank with you, I didn't have the skills that were necessary to create that vision. I certainly didn't have the money to create, to create that vision. And my dad's been gone about 10 years now. And I just took my boat out for the second time. Now, the first time I was just chugging along on idle, um, I had no throttle but I got back at InSync. Second time, took my daughter and uh, her roommate out on the lake. I had throttle this time. Boat was doing great. Ran it around for a couple of hours, actually, on the lake. And had an awesome time, but on the way back, sudden drop of oil pressure. Looks like I've lost my motor. So I'm back. Uh at this crossroads that I seem to keep coming uh, back to. (laughs) And that those crossroads are that I have to learn this motor. Um, I need to understand every inch of it. I need to understand how it operates. I need to um, have it in good working order and know that everything about that motor is in good shape. I want to take it out on the ocean, and I also have a vision, too, of taking the boat to the Bahamas, to Bimini, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Now, I'm in Virginia right now, so that would require me to trailer the boat down to Florida, which I can do, Uh, not a big deal, and then uh, take it from Fort Lauderdale over to the Bahamas. Now, I would have a flotilla go with me. So I'm not going to just go alone. Uh, but I have some friends who still live down there and maybe, you know, this is years in the making. So maybe I need to start uh, pulling a group of people together and we can all go. Uh, maybe this is your swift kick in the ass, you know, to get your boat going (laughs) and let's go. Um, I think it's going to be amazing, but I wanted to share a bit with you. Uh, you know, this boat 
is part of really part of the family at at this point uh but it's not a you know it, it's not a person it's a thing uh and it's re uh, something that's so well built that it's gonna you know be around after i'm long gone so I plan on ha handing this down, and that's also part of my vision. Is you know this is going to be fam family centered and adventure centered. So it's not only um, good for me, and you know it's going to be good for my family. In any case, this project has become something more than I could have ever imagined. It's hit me on a very deep personal level. Uh, now, my dad and I, when I was a kid, my dad used to take me down to his, uh, his friend Clem's uh, marine boatyard. He was a marine, Clem was a marine mechanic. He was salty. You know, he had a anchor tattoo, I remember as a kid. And uh, he and his wife, Loretta, um, they ran the business, they ran the boat yard and my dad and I would spend many, a you know, a Saturday just going down there and working, working on the, um, boat motor, working on the boat. Um, so I, I actually helped build the motor that's in my boat. Uh, and some of the work that I've been doing on this motor to kind of get it up to snuff again as, um, I, I, I remember it brought back memories of doing the work with my dad. So, you know, talk about vision. You know, we have vision, both vision of what is yet to come, uh, you know, our expectations that we're building within ourselves. Uh, um, and I think you have to be care really careful with what you expect. Uh, we'll get into that. But you can also have visions of the past. Um, you know, was it all rainbows and gumdrops back then? No, it was hard times. Um, but you tend to, I look back at all those, those, th those little things just, they don't matter anymore. Um, you know, we're only here on this earth for a very short period of time and life passes by so quickly. Um, and this is one of the things that I've, been kicking myself about perseverance and this, this is why I want to I'm kicking my own ass but I want you to be aware because time is passing and I have lost so much time on this boat I have a, I have had this vision for a long time of using this boat as a tool to bring my family together uh you know time out on the water creating new adventures, you know, for not only for me, but for my family, for my friends and really sharing this, um, with others. I, it's a cool boat. <laughs> it's a 1966 boat. This thing is almost 60 years old. Um, but it's made out of fiberglass and it is a, it, it's such a cool boat. So check out my website. If you want to see pictures of it, um, and I'm going to start documenting this, my work on it because I blew the engine and now I'm at this crossroads again. I keep on coming back to, I didn't put the, there's a story behind this boat, but I've had someone put the motor in and the mechanic, he did some work, but he really didn't do what I wanted him to do. I wanted him to rebuild the motor and go through it and replace all the seals and everything like that. He didn't do that. So now I have to pay the price and I have to pull the motor out myself and I'm going to rebuild the motor. I'm not that mechanical, all right, but I guess I'm more mechanical than I believe I am. Um, and my skill level is certainly much more than it was five years ago or 10 years ago. Um, and this boat has actually given me a kind of a baseline to compare the quality and level of my work because 
you know, I've worked on these, this boat for years in one way or another. So I know it really well, but, um, as I look, you know, and I have to repair things or, you know, do this or do that. I, I find, you know, I'm not so happy. You know, I, I find issues. <laughs> I find issues and I find that I probably would have atta- uh, approached it a little bit differently. So I've learned to live, learn and live and learn. Uh, and it has reinforced my belief that we have to keep learning and we're going to keep learning as we live. And this is a great thing. Um, I used to really dread, I've been dreading pulling the motor. Uh, I've been trying to pawn off the work on other people, on my friends. Instead of taking full responsibility and just taking the lead, uh, I've tried to pawn that off because I don't want to do it. But I'm finding that life is saying, John, you have to do this. And I'm not going to give you a choice. And I keep coming back to these cross to this crossroad to where I feel like, you know what? Stop spending so much energy on things that you can't change. Um, it is, this is what it is. It was running great. And we had such a great time on the boat. And now I have that experience and it's just, it's like, you know what? The boat is awesome. The motor needs some more attention (laughs) and I'm going to get that motor. It's the attention it needs come hell or high water. And I'm going to figure out exactly how to do it. I'm going to take this audience along with me on, on the road. Now, this is just going to be one thing I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about other things besides. So, you know, this is not going to become the boat channel, but I really think that it is a great example of bringing vision and your, your current level of skill, uh, kind of together with perseverance to make it into something real. Um, now this, you know, where do you start? Uh, what is this vision? You know, it's kind of, um, the vision kind of came to me. I mean, it's not something I really started to, uh, started to think about, but it kind of just arose. I mean, it just kind of came to me. It just the thought. And, um, you know, I can't tell you how to create a vision for yourself and I'm not going to tell you what you want out of life. That's for you to decide, but it's a pretty grand scheme, right? You know, um, I want to involve my, my vision and my dream is involves others and involves my family and involves creating experiences, uh, and memories with, with my friends and family. To me, that's what life is about and creating a full life. And I'm going to kick myself in the ass to get myself going, uh, and keep doing this. And if it means that I have to learn how to rebuild a motor, I'm going to do that. Um, and you know, I'm going to, this is going to actually bring my friends into the fold more, uh, in particular, my friend, Jason, who I've, uh, I interviewed, uh, I'm not sure what episode back, but, uh, Jason Greska, he and I, um, interviewed, you know, we talked about uh, martial arts and our black belt test. And now we're halfway to uh, our second degree black belt. Um, and <clears throat> he's a master mechanic. And I know he's going to help me along the way. So maybe I'll bring him into a, one of the podcasts um, and talk more about this. And uh, definitely include him on the, uh, you know, on the website, he's, uh, he, for you car affectionados, uh, Jason has a 1955 Chevy two door. It's pretty cool. It's got this, uh, 
kind of uh what is it alcohol um whiskey runner trunk it's like it could hold a lot of jars of moonshine but he's rebuilding the motor in that and i'm hoping that once he gets done with that he will be able to help me rebuild the motor in my boat uh yesterday i got a taste really of that boat uh and going out there with my daughter and her friend it was so awesome um grinning from ear to ear and before my motor blew up uh, it was amazing it gave me a, ta a taste of it so i think that is also key to keeping motivated and persevering through the thick and thin of whatever you're trying to create uh, getting a taste of what that vision is like is truly awesome and i cherish i'm gonna i cherish that memory and even though it blew up it, i still had a very positive uh look at the experience and i learned something um you know, in the process, and I know I'm going to learn more, and I'm going to keep kicking myself in the ass to keep to keep going, and I'm going to make it happen. So, this is a long-term goal, and in just as in life, there are going to be ups and downs in it, and some things are going to be. Uh, harder than others it's going to be more difficult and more challenging um and some things will be easier you know you don't really know what what that is but it happens and it, it comes out of the of the work and it comes out of the process that you're going through so just expect it um i can tell you that i have been much healthier um mentally from this it has given me such strength such resolve i feel like i have found a part of myself i have reconnected with uh with the mechanical side of of me the you know it's not just um a, the skill of turning the wrench there's a mindset associated with it um, there's also the experience of getting over these challenges that you have uh, in mechanical uh, situations, like when you break a bolt off. Uh, Sixty-year-old uh, bolts are pretty brittle. You have to be careful with them. Uh, when you're not really a mechanic, you don't really know these things, and uh, I've broken some bolts. So I'm learning how to, really learning how to, uh, fix my mistakes as well as fix the things that I, that I think are mistakes, uh, things that I think are wrong with the motor. Cause I want it to be just totally awesome. I want it to be like new. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to make it happen. It's going to take me a while, but I know I can do it. And the more it, the more you chip away at the project, the more steam it it develops and the more confidence you have in yourself so one thing that has been key to my success is knowing that no one is going to come save me i have to figure this out for myself i have to get the whatever i'm trying to accomplish i need to get it done if that includes getting a bolt out uh then that's the task. And I focus on that. It helps me really focus in on the here and now and what's important and what I need to do to get to the next step. I've applied this and in, in this project, but I've also applied this at work now. So I'm actually like doing better at work because of this. I'm developing skills that can be applied in many different situations through, you know, what some would call a hobby. So this is what I bring to you. Um, I want 
to be th- that motivation to kick you in the ass and get you going on whatever you're trying to achieve. And let's make this world a better place through our own actions and what we can change because we know that there are so many things out there that we just hate to see, but our hands are tied and we have very little control over it. It's time to bring back control. Kick yourself in the ass for allowing um, your allowing someone to take that from you. You know, we often want to put control in the hands of others or uh, put ourselves, you know, put ourselves as dependent on some other situation. Uh, For instance, like career wise, um, the organization's holding you back. Uh, You're not in the right position. You're getting looked over because other people are feeling in these openings around you and maybe you feel left out. Well, you, no one's going to look out for you, but you. So make things happen. And perseverance is uh, especially useful in a career. Um, If you want a new job, then it's up to you to seek that job. And the way that happens is you fill out applications. The more applications you fill out, the greater the chances are that you get an interview or get an opportunity to say yes or no to an interview. Once you have that interview, maybe you have yes an opportunity to uh, say yes or no to maybe another interview and another one after that. <laughs> and then ultimately a new job. But this takes vision, it takes perseverance, it takes skills. You may not have the skills that you need right now to get where you to get to that vision, but you're going to get them along the way. You're going to build that. I know you can, because if I can do it, you can absolutely do it. So I'm going to end with that. Uh, This is John Curran. Keep coming back for more kicks and ass. Peace. Uh, Affiliates for you. For you car. This marks the end of another episode of a swift kick in the ass, placing it directly in the can. As much as I like to talk, even I have my limits. It's time to go. Catch me on the next show. For better or worse, Whether you like us or not, please leave comments wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Twitter. Visit our home on the interweb. I think you can leave me a voicemail there. You can also email me at john at aswiftkickintheass.com. It's been my extreme pleasure. I hope you got a lot out of it. I hope you got your ass moving. Until then... Until the next time, I'm out of here. Peace.